What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Mr. Meyer, with the fire, here to share ideas and take our collective vibration higher. And we have a full moon coming up on Sunday, October 9th, and I have a lot to say. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope your lunar cycle has been great since our last breakdown with uh, Emma and Libra. We've been planting seeds in the universe, enjoying this Libra energy, building more peace, building more balance, building more fairness, equality, reciprocity. That's the name of the game. If you are Libra, happy birthday, early, belated, or current. Really cool to celebrate love, celebrate connection, the need for partnership. Libra talks about a lot, guys. But as an air sign, I will just remind you before we go any further, this season, these next couple weeks, in the last two weeks, has been about ideals, about logic, about the intellect, making it make sense in your life, in whatever realm or arena that is. So we're going to talk about what this full moon is like and what we can expect, the aspects, the angles, how it might hit your specific chart. On that note, you're going to want to look at your natal chart, okay? Because we all have a different rising sign. This is going to make us have different signs in the 12 houses of our chart. So it's going to be really important that you understand where your ascendant is so you can figure out which house you have Aries in. Because the house that you have Aries in is going to be full, moon full. And this means you're going to need to let certain energies out of this part of your life to get new energy in. And this is something to consider. Now that we're on that page, you just keep in mind, we're halfway through the lunar cycle. So with the conjunction of the sun and moon starting at new, and now we're at the halfway point, and then you got the sun pointing its light directly on the moon, shining it right back on the earth, and we can look up in the sky and see a beaming full moon, and that's beautiful. So we're about to start waning on down. The seeds that we've been planting in the universe are bearing to fruition. This is time to retrospect on what you were doing the last couple weeks. But deeper than this, you want to see and consider what's working and keep doing that. And then if you are seeing fruits that are undesirable, things that you didn't really intend, this is time to redirect your course and start to release because we are now waning and the light of the moon is going to get smaller and smaller until we hit that new cycle again, come Scorpio, okay? So, when you have the full moon, again, this deals with your emotions and your feelings, and this part of yourself is meant to be fulfilled. So what is Aries? Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So this really deals with the self. It deals with the individuality. It deals with our instinctive expression and experience in life. So we could call the Aries full moon a need for freedom in whatever house that it ends up falling in your chart. But I would say that these two energies, balancing Aries Libra, does really talk about creating peace within your own heart, which is where the moon orbits in the aura, how you connect, dealing with your feelings, doing your healing. This is honestly one of the most powerful full moons of the year. I know I said that with full moon in Pisces, but guys, I will substantiate my claim. Um, we're going to get to that. So there's a lot of healing coming up for all of us. Damn near any time the moon is full, but... When you have the full moon conjunct Chiron in the solar system, you can expect a lot of hidden things to be brought to the surface. Integration of pain or the things that you would deliberately neglect. So this is about balancing your life, creating peace within yourself. Aries deals with the I am. Libra deals with the we are. And we need both of these energies to balance each other. That is polarity. But you can only meet another person as far as you've met yourself so aries full moon speaks to us about falling in love with our life your life it's like that j cole song love yours everybody's always got something better or there's always a faster car or a more beautiful person that you could partner with or a higher paying job or this that and the third but your life is beautiful and when you realize why you're living the things that you live you'll start to see that the universe is conspiring for your success and things are unfolding for you. We don't always get what we want, but what did he say? You just might find you get what you need. Not the exact words, but you guys probably heard that song. You get what you need. You get what you deserve as well. So the Aries energy is about locking in on your vision. As a fire sign, this deals more with sight and passion and intensity creation. So in other words, we could call this feeling full of ourselves, feeling full of ourselves or needing to release obstacles that hold us back from our true independence or freedom that's another thing to think about is that this is going to make all of 
of us feel the need for more freedom, more self-expression. This also deals with relating yourself to the world, y'all. Taking your individuality and connecting it to your life, connecting it to other people, understanding who you believe yourself to be. This is where we tie back to Libra. I think, therefore I am. What the fuck am I then? If I can think something, choose something that represents my principle of understanding, I can exemplify this through my choices throughout the day. And I can do this every day. So I would encourage you guys to really pride yourself on being the same person everywhere you go. Relationships are a beautiful tool for self-discovery and evolution. And there's many different types of relationships for different reasons. So, you know, the relationship you have with your children might be different than the one to your spouse and your boss and your coworkers and your friends and your book club, etc. So you have different people coming to your life for different reasons. But see if you can make sure that you show up in the same way everywhere you go. Obviously, your duties and responsibilities and interactions with people will be different based on relationship, but I think you can see the principle that if you know your truth, you can just be your truth no matter what. You don't have to necessarily hide yourself or change your individuality to comply with other people. Sometimes you can try to meet them halfway, but this is about not suppressing yourself, not suppressing who you are and not putting other people's needs above your own at the expense of suppressing or denying what you actually need, okay? So this is about relating yourself to the world. And I do wanna kinda talk about me for a second and get on this energy, guys. There's an art and a science to writing a horoscope, like I had mentioned before. As a Leo Mercury in the 12th houses and a Jupiter of Pisces, you know, I did have some fun last night relating this on TikTok Live and bouncing ideas off of the collective, but I do like to take a lot of time to really consider all of these angles and put my consciousness in all of these aspects and try to take a full 360 approach towards all of this because I did mention earlier, it does determine, the effect is determined by your rising sign and when you correlate this transit to your full actual life. But at the same time, I don't know most of you guys personally, so you're gonna need to consider your own subjective biases, your own life, and realize that not all of this will play out for you, but at the same time, I'm gonna do my best in this reading, like I said, to do a full 360 on all the angles I talk about and try to talk about many of the spectrums of possibilities that come with these aspects, okay? So this is a new need for self-expression or freedom, independence, needing to be able to charge after our desires, our passion, our vision, what we want or intend. That's really what Aries deals with, okay? So this does talk about reserving your love and care for those that actually deserve it. When you understand your interaction with other people and you understand your needs and where your obligations and duties lie, you can really treat yourself better and respect yourself when you have an understanding of boundaries. This is time to stand up to, for yourself when you see things that you don't want to tolerate or can't tolerate. Asking for what you want. Relationships are a key focus for all of Libra season. So one thing we're not going to do now that we're halfway through this is make assumptions of other people. We shouldn't do this in any season, quite honestly. We should ask for what we want, set clear expectations of others so they can meet us halfway, okay? And if they're not willing to meet us halfway, this is where we can use our boundaries as confirmation that we are living in our truth. And that's as real as it gets, y'all. It's not always easy. Sometimes you got to really understand that conflict delayed is conflict multiplied. And while you would rather not speak and hold their peace, confrontation can sometimes be uneasy for yourself or another person. But like I said, if conflict delayed is conflict multiplied, sometimes you're going to need to really just ask for what you want. Because if things are not fair, they're not balanced, they're not equal, and all you do rather than confront the problem is find a way to deal with it internally, it doesn't make shit un doesn't make shit fair. It's still unfair. So you're going to need to really take balance into your own hands in this full moon cycle. Okay? Understanding your non-negotiables and boundaries, not tolerating unnecessary interruptions or interference. I did make a list of do's and don'ts for this full moon also, guys. So what we're going to do in this cycle is we're going to trust ourselves. Do trust yourself. Have faith in your vision and your ability to create and fulfill your needs. 
there is that inherent need to be partnered, which we'll talk about. Libra, Sun, Libra, Venus, all that. So if you can't deny the needs of a person and yourself and the significance others will add to your life, but at the end of the day, dude, if you look to others to fulfill needs that you are required to fulfill for yourself, the relationships you create will have a lack of reciprocity. And that will be your fault, whether you know it or not. So just make that understood before you go really further. We are going to. So do determine your why. Understand what your life is about. I would encourage you to maybe do a thought experiment and fast forward 10 years and think about giving yourself permission to do everything you ever wanted to do. Giving yourself the investment and the reassurance and the positivity and the love and you make all these deliberate choices and you took massive consistent action on your intentions and desires. What does your life look like 10 years from the down the line when you gave yourself permission to be all that you desired to be? Think about it, see it, feel it, sense it and then you might need to pause and take a second to do that. But then what you're going to want to do is think about the message that your life conveys, the meaning of your life, the reason you do all those things. Why did you choose those choices? When you arrive at an answer, you're going to be very close to your principle, if not standing right on top of it. Found your why, the reason you're doing the things that you do. It really does matter what your why is, but I do want to say that your why can be so complex and different, and it doesn't have to be anything like anybody else's why. Realistically, your why will be different than everybody else's. This is Aries energy, the cardinal fire, the self, trusting the self. We're going to trust ourselves. We're going to get ready to take massive action. This is also on our list of do's. I just made it three. Trust yourself, determine your why, get ready to take massive action, okay? And here's our don'ts. The first thing we're not going to do, do not ask other people for permission to pursue what you desire. Stop fucking doing that. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to anybody in the world. It's truly not. So we're not going to do that. Also, don't go against your principles to attain what you want. Aries deals with choice. Mars deals with choice. This is about being appropriate with your energy, using force. To the right amount not being excessive with your energy but staying firm and holding yourself with integrity not going overboard doing too much acting out of character we're gonna pay attention to this energy or these desires and any aggression and frustration that comes up and we're gonna channel this shit in a healthy way so hey, number three, do not <laughs> hurt yourself or other people because of anger and frustration. The Aries energy is passionate. It's probably the most intense sign, quite honestly, is get up and go and charge head first and think fucking later and ask questions later and apologize, maybe never. So with this in mind, full moon coming up in this sign, prepare for tension to be up. Just prepare for it so you can act accordingly. This is time to confront our self-destructive patterns. This is time to stop self-sabotaging. This is time to really exemplify will through the choices we make every day, okay? It's not necessarily easy. Quite honestly, this is sometimes the hardest shit to fucking do, but when you reach a point in your evolutionary journey where there's nothing left besides to get over your own bullshit, this is the path of least resistance, okay? So. We're going to talk about the sun conjunct Venus and maybe get a couple cards as we jump into this because this is the energy of our full moon. Ooh, five of cups in reverse. You know, this is about letting go of the past and this is about forgiving yourself for your mistakes. Really determining your why and your vision, getting out of your damn way, having more optimism and faith in life. So you can really go after all you feel is divinely destined for you. Realizing that all your mistakes and all the disappointment and rejection that was placed in front of you was part of the purpose. It may have not been what you wanted, but it might have been what you needed. 
So, food for thought, guys. What do you think about the sun? Yeah, hold up in patience and standing firm in your power. Having realistic expectations of yourself in this cycle so you don't disempower yourself and feel the need to destroy yourself because of feelings of desperation or pessimism. Sometimes all you can literally do is watch your damn plants grow. And you can't be shouting at the plant and getting pissed off because it's not growing as fast as you want. Have you guys heard about those experiments um, in scientific tests where they literally did that and then they played classical music to a different plant and they sent love to another plant? Guess which plant grew better? It wasn't the one that was screamed at, you know? So you get a lot sweeter fruits with honey and patience, right? That's something to consider. So this full moon is happening at 15 degrees, or I'm sorry, 16 degrees of Aries, sun at 16 Libra. So we have Venus at 13 Libra, and this is a conjunction, okay? Venus deals with how we value things. This deals with your needs, how you relate to yourself and other people. So with the full moon opposing Venus or the sun conjunct Venus, either way you want to call it, this brings up seeing the beauty in life. Starting to appreciate things, giving gratitude towards the world, your experiences, and learning to really appreciate what's in front of your face. And that's a really beautiful thing. And this also talks about appreciating your face, sun conjunct Venus, learning the love of the self, acting on the love of the self, appreciating it. A lot of learning. There might be a lot more spending time by yourself, hermit, Virgo. The need to take care of the self. To balance your everyday life. Venus rules the second house, the seventh house. It exalts in the twelfth, falls in the sixth. So, you know, this really talks about the need to balance your life in the realm of your everyday. The sun conjunct Venus. On the note of taking your life and loving yours, organization is a thing that this talks about, but also figuring out how we can apply more beauty into our everyday life, whether that's enjoying more fun, food that tastes good, company, clothes, music, you know. Venus does deal with the pleasures and the, the senses of the body as well. Learning compassionate action is another sun conjunct Venus thing. Learning how to be loving in the way that we express ourselves in the world. Learning to be kind is something that just came to mind. This also talks about the want to be partnered. Sun conjunct Venus and Libra. Feeling the need to be partnered. However, we do have plenty of retrogrades. Usually I run through the whole list of all the planets. I kind of forgot to, don't necessarily need to. Because you can really look at it if you want to. All the information is on the internet. But I saw a Two of Cups reversed. And I will tell you, while this Venus in Libra transit is happening, Saturn is still in retrograde. And Saturn is going to be in retrograde for the entirety of Libra Venus. So while we may feel the need internally to be partnered, we may be dealing with our vast. We might be brushing up the dust from the last partnerships or the ones that happened way the long Oh God, who knows how long ago, you know? Time is relative and we're all dealing with different things, but Saturn retrograde in unison with Libra Venus is talking about building real bonds and making sure that the relationships we have are built on reciprocity, fairness, and honesty. So this is about raising your standards as well as a form of self-love. Not using love as an escape from our will, Here's our Libra card, our Justice card. I just want to say, Ace of Cups in reverse, Ace of Wands upright. Don't use love as an escape from your will, purpose, and choice in this world. For some of us, and this is probably why your relationship fucked up, hear me out. Some of us use partnership as a form of escape as a form of surrender for the choices that we could and should probably be making. So you have to use your own judgment to determine if that's the truth. But I will say that, again, 
relationships are one of the best vehicles and tools for self-discovery, evolution, therefore enlightenment. So there are huge rewards and benefits that come from a relationship, especially romantic ones, love, right? And love is a limited word for an energy that we want to add construct to. But the point is, loving somebody romantically can be one of the fastest ways to unify with the source of your creation because love requires surrender. Love requires acceptance. Love requires release. Okay? This is how you connect back to your source to learn surrender, learn compromise, learn devotion, sacrifice in a meaningful way. So the problem comes whenever we are not making sacrifices in a meaningful way. When our need for connection, water supersedes and suppresses our need to make deliberate, intentional, meaningful, helpful choices. This is what we need to consider. This is about not lying to yourself, not lying to anybody else, not allowing others to lie to you, setting your boundaries clear, creating your expectations up front, letting go of a bullshit part of yourself that's stuck and repressed, choosing more for yourself because you know you deserve more, raising your standards as a form of self-love, willfully connecting your emotions to the things that you don't necessarily want to fucking connect to, Shadow work, asking yourself, why do I do the things I do? Clearly, I'm the common denominator in all of my relationships I've ever been in. So what implicit responsibility do I have in creating this bullshit? How can I scientifically ensure that I do not repeat this cycle the next time I create one? These are the questions we need to think about. Generally speaking, this comes from a feeling of inadequacy. The times in the past when we had our needs unmet and we had to criticize our experience or ourself and affirm that we didn't deserve our needs met to make sense of things. We carried that load when it wasn't necessarily fair, but maybe we had no other fucking option. And now we planted these seeds and now we got to release them. It just is what it is. Okay. Walking away from some shit that we probably needed to then walk away from, but this is Saturn and Pisces energy, right? Here, guys, this is like deconstruction and reconstruction of yourself and while you might feel the need to want to surrender to another person and start to connect to feel that reciprocity, relation, reflection, this talks about pausing and surrendering to the universe, surrendering to the source of your creation. You hear the birds, man. This is about letting go so you can understand why you hold the fuck on so much. And then just facing, bracing, and facing the change, man. Face the music. It is time to stop running from our shadows. The only way out is through. So it is time to face the music. Let's talk about the full moon conjunct Chiron at this point, y'all. When I was writing down this angle, the first thing that came to mind was a, here it is, a phrase, man. I can't hold it anymore. Ace of Wands in reverse, guys. Chiron is the asteroid of healing. And here's our fool in reverse. Cycles repeating that we've been wanting to get off this fucking roller coaster nightmare. Holy shit. <laughs> I can't hold this anymore, man. I'm ready for a fucking change. Chiron deals with healing. Objectively, what you need to know about Chiron, because it's not one of the traditional planets, this is an asteroid or a comet or a centaur. We don't all agree on what we call it, but this celestial body orbits between Saturn and then Uranus. Saturn is the last inner planet. You can see it without the telescope. You need a telescope to see Chiron and Uranus. So the point being, all of these bodies are part of your own body, your own awareness. They sit in your chart and they affect you geographically and geometrically. So the point of the outer planets is to bridge your consciousness into higher faculties of, of human awareness, spiritual awareness. If everybody can objectively point at Saturn, this governs what's structure. It governs the society, the status quo, the consensus. So Chiron talks about individuating, finding your truth. Chiron is about refusing to follow the herd just for the sake of following it. This doesn't mean be rebel without a cause necessarily, but this is about who are you 
because you're clearly different than everybody else in the world. You have a cross to bear. Saturn told you that. But the funny thing about bearing the cross, AKA taking care of your responsibilities, that's what that means, is that while you bear your cross, not everybody and hardly nobody sometimes, man, I know that was a double negative, but I think you understand. A lot of times nobody can understand why you suffer through your responsibilities to the extent that you do. And you might not even also because of the nature of why you need these responsibilities on a spiritual level. So this is where Chiron confuses people, but also empowers them and launches them into spiritual awakening and integration of their gifts. Oftentimes, this is because of the catalyst of trauma, the pain that we experience, the times when we've chosen something and we've gotten rejected or we fell on our face or we ended up getting hurt physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. Chiron is really painful, y'all. This is where your pain comes from a soul level. But pain is evolution. Pain is strength. Same way on this earth, you can bump your elbow or hit a table, bump your knee, and you have a neurological response. And this unconsciously will bring your awareness to the pain. And the awareness will bring energy and this will resolve things. So Chiron represents like where your spirit bumped into the table. And as a human, that feels like an itch you can't scratch until you really rise above this 3D plane and look at this with some spiritual responsibility, okay? So the full moon in Chiron is talking about, I can't hold this shit anymore, man, because I need freedom. I need self-expression. I need to be myself. I can't hold myself back anymore. I can't hold the pain anymore of my past or I can't hold back playing small. I can't hold on to self-doubt anymore. I can't hold on to critical judgments of myself every fucking day. This shit gets too heavy. It's not how heavy it is, it's how long you hold it. So this does bring up letting go of the past pain. Deep emotional healing. Like I mentioned, guys, this is an outer planet, technically. So this talks about meeting yourself, come full moon, on a deeper level than you've ever met yourself. Finding parts of yourself that you maybe deliberately hid from yourself. Parts of yourself that you had to hide from yourself, perhaps because the pain was too hard. And this is something to be excited about. I was feeling some um, apprehension in the energy. No, this is something to be really excited about and make peace with guys, because healing is the path of least resistance. This work we've been neglecting because of either, you know, despondency, um, depression, lack of enthusiasm, or literally not having the fucking tools. Either way it goes, dude, surrender to your feelings so you can really push them through and then heal and integrate them. So this could look like feeling triggered. The reason I give these breakdowns for you guys is so you can understand the vibes and act accordingly. And keep in mind that everybody else who doesn't do astrology is going to be going through the same thing. So you can kind of anticipate the reactions of other people ahead of time. This is why we talk about this, okay? So with the full moon in Aries, this is going to make everybody excited and passionate and kind of aggressive. And maybe even a little bit frustrated in the way that they use their Mars. When we got Chiron here as well, this just adds. So that's the full moon. Let me, let me kind of paint a picture for you guys. This is like a pond of water that is like full of chili flakes, full moon in Aries. That's what I just got in my head. But Chiron conjunct the full moon is like a down power line in this fucking chili flake water pond. Okay. Does that maybe give you an idea of what we're looking at? So got everybody touchy and sensitive perhaps in some way, shape or form. You're going to see everybody's <laughs> ability to control themselves in a couple of days. Mark my words, y'all. Don't take it personally if people aren't constructive with their energy or they're hyper aggressive or they have misdirected anger. This is time for you to avoid your own self-destructive behavior. You need to understand that if you knew better, you would do better. So sometimes what others or yourself might consider bad choices might be because of necessity. The Western world and maybe just the first world globally kind of has addiction really messed up in the way that we understand it. So I want to um, recommend Gabor Mate. He has many talks on YouTube and they're so insightful. But if we're struggling with choice and using our energy and not self-sabotaging, you need to understand that fighting addiction is a very natural thing. Addiction is a natural adaptation to unnatural circumstances. And this does bring back up the same conversation of investigating the source of our pain, sitting with it, 
integrating the pain, sending love to the pain so we can release it, finding out where our needs were unmet in our past so we can go back and revisit the past, be the person we needed, fill our heart, send love, send space. Sometimes people wonder, how do you heal the past? And truly, the message I had to give yesterday on live and the one I will say today is, you do have the tools at this point, if you're listening, but you need to lower the bar. Don't expect it to be, you know, impossible. All you really need is time and space. This is like, don't overthink it. Even though trauma is overstimulating, this is kind of why we need to have this discussion. When you're dealing with the pain or the grief or the, the anger, whatever feeling had to be repressed, this is like hitting your max bench press, quite honestly, dude. Like, it only got, like, think about it. It only got suppressed because it was something you couldn't hold. So now that you've been growing, think about a lobster growing in size and breaking out of its shell every now and then. Now that you've gotten to a bigger size, you can't hold it anymore. That's the whole theme, you know? So we're going to let it go. But as you let this go and as you're pushing this weight off, you're going to feel the feelings. So you may feel overwhelmed. You may feel all that pain, all that trauma, all that neglect, all that abuse, whatever it was, guys. And I'm sending you love for it too. You may start feeling this energy. And what you really need to do is just give your presence to this energy. Try your best not to judge yourself. I can't really move on from this point until I get the thought out completely, guys. You need to really sit with the pain and learn to not judge it because a lot of our collective trauma comes from our childhoods, okay? So what this means is with a child being completely egocentric and completely dependent on this uh, nurturers for survival, generally speaking, it's all about me, 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 and my needs. So whenever you're abused, neglected, hurt, um, insulted, invalidated, it's only natural for a child to internalize a negative self-talk or a negative belief about the self. So what I'm telling you guys is when you start going through your pain, and you start confronting the trauma, you may hear the voice of your inner child or your inner teen or your inner young adult or maybe even the person you were last month, you know? You're gonna hear those thought forms again, most likely. And it might sound like I'm not strong enough or it might sound like I'm weak or there's something wrong with me. And you're gonna need to really take a second to breathe and pause and just give presence and refuse to affirm those things. Give the, the time and space you're gonna validate those feelings, but you don't have to claim them. This is how you reparent yourself, on the example of inner child healing, but even then, if it was an adult thing, your higher self is gonna reparent yourself all the time. So you can say, hey, it's okay for you to feel like you don't belong, it's okay for you to feel like the world is fucked up and you're weak and you don't belong in this world and that you shouldn't be here and everything's your fault. It's okay to feel that I see you and I love you, but I'm here for your best and highest good and I'm sending love to you. I accept you. You're perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. I accept you just as you are. You are safe. You are amazing. You are significant. You are special. I love you. You're safe. And I need you home. And this is inner child healing. This is soul retrieval. At whatever age. To look at that pain, that stuckness, where the emotions were blocked because of the weight of them, and to put love into it, to chip that block down, and then to call your soul back into your body. Because when the soul experiences a pain that is too painful for the self to live through, the soul will split from the ego. And this is why we can go through our day-to-day -day life and feel dead or despondent or depressed or lifeless. We have to call ourselves back. Sandra or Sarah Ingerman has a book called Soul Retrieval. S. Ingerman, very good book. I so strongly recommend it if this is touching on something deep. Before we go any further, I charge and consecrate this incense with the energy of Chiron and Scorpio to bring deep, divine soul healing into our lives for the best and highest good of all with harm to none. Thank you for helping us release our pain and integrate this into strength and purpose and determination. So with Chiron and Aries, a lot of us are getting our Chiron return too. I've been seeing this as an astrologer. So what you guys need to understand is that um, the problems that a lot of us are facing right now might be problems these Chiron Aries people deal with a lot more personally. So what you need to understand in this new cycle come up um, a couple days from now, and just as you're putting your seeds in the universe, y'all, is that 
as you're doing your healing and you're feeling triggered and you're going through um, the shadow work process and peeling back layers and finding yourself deeper and choosing to go after your desires and taking deliberate action, listen, it's okay to feel unsure of who you are. It's okay to feel like you don't know who the fuck you are. This is how you find yourself. It's okay to not know where you're going. <laughs> I promise you. It's okay to not know why. This is the first step to figuring out why. It's okay to be doubtful in yourself, y'all. You do get to see a shiny, happy Leo a lot of time, but I will tell you guys, I had to work really hard to get this um, self-assurance. And self-doubt is something that I may fight on a regular basis at varying percentage levels. So this is the need for self-love, self-assurance, self-care in many shapes and forms. You need to understand with this energy, full moon conjunct Chiron, is that the fears that come up within you, these are places within you that are waiting for your love. Self-doubt is a place that waits your love and affirmation and reassurance. Speak love and life and positivity into yourself. Avoid self-destructive behaviors, y'all. Try not to overindulge or make bad choices just for the illusion of control. This is some real Mars energy. Don't do shit that you know is harmful to yourself just because it makes you feel in control rather than being in control, okay? That's about as real as it gets, quite honestly. Don't take shit personally when you don't get what you want. Don't take it personally if others misdirect their anger or aggression towards you. But I want to say thrice because it's nice, man. Don't take it personally if you don't get what you want from life. Chiron and Aries is a very special energy that the soul teaches all of us in the world. Chiron and Aries teaches us about exemplifying will, understanding the best choices, and the significance of instinct. This is real shit. So at the end of the day, guys, this is why... We need to look at others to understand how needs can be symbiotic and service can run concurrent and coexist with others. But at the end of the day, this talks about not putting others so high above yourself that you suppress, deny, or refuse to acknowledge the fact that you have needs in general. If you feel called to lead and do the best, like the Aries Chiron people, in natal, but also through the transit. These guys kind of feel like they have to make the best choices all the time. This can speak to a ultimate people pleaser because you just really value being a good person. As simple as I could put it, that's what it is. You just want to be a good fucking person. So this means that you would like to be a person who makes good choices and has a good will. And that's as simple as that. But at the same time, man, this makes you hyper Libra where sometimes you second guess yourself or you doubt yourself or you look to external people, places and things to confirm your own individuality when you should really just be trusting yourself. This can lead to a deep mistrust in a lot of things, man. So like really when we're talking about the self-love, self-affirmation and self-care, the magic words is I trust myself. I love and I trust myself. I have faith in my actions and my ability to succeed and overcome all challenges and adversities on all levels. So this is why, again, I want to say four times now because I didn't make the thought complete. My bad. My good. Uh, don't take it personally because sometimes while you're going about trying to be the best optimal person and making the best choices you can, sometimes you don't understand the significance and weight of your choices and how it affects the rest of the world. So sometimes while you may think that you know what's best, sometimes we can harm others unconsciously. And this is just simply the fact of this shit, man, unfortunately. Sometimes we can harm others unconsciously and everything is energy. So we live in a web, the web of the world. Your strand connects to my strand and my strand connects to your mom's strand <laughs> and uh, every strand. I'm tapped in, bro. So um, the point is that when you harm another strand of the web, you harm the whole fucking web. I'm serious. So, don't take it personally when the universe rejects your choices sometimes, man. Because if we are unconsciously choosing to harm others, but we think it's in the best interest of all, 
we may get some divine intervention every now and then or divine rejection, you know, rejection being protection, like guides or spirit or your higher self said, hey, we don't want you to take on all that negative ass karma. I'm not a father in this life yet, but I want to say like, we can think about parenting as an example. Think about if you gave your three year old permission to do everything they ever wanted to do. What if you never enforced discipline or choice or rejection upon your child? What would that look like? You know, would your child be healthy, happy or alive at this point? Maybe not, you know? So we do need protection from um, higher authority every now and then. Chiron and Aries, okay? So don't take that shit personally. Moon and Chiron conjunct opposite Venus. This talks about healing within relationships to others and ourselves. There's a lot of ways this is going to play out, y'all, because, again, if we knew better, we would do better. So this is going to bring, bring up the need to release judgment and criticism to yourself for your own mistakes. But on the other note, man, this is going to be about you learning to forgive other people for their mistakes. If people knew better, they would do better. I think we can all give the world the benefit of the doubt with Chiron and Aries say that if people truly knew a best way to be, they would be that way. That being said, we all have complex lives and know a lot of other people in different circumstances. So I promise you, because I've seen this too, some people knew fucking better and they chose to do some shitty things. Some people fucked up and used their will and aggression intentionally misdirected and misguided and harmed other people so at the end of the day it may not logically make sense so we got to rise above through chiron and take it to a higher spiritual level and realize that on some level man people have a lack of fulfillment and maybe their unconscious needs for security get in front of their way of their conscious methods of seeking security and that is what it is quite honestly so while we learn to forgive others, we don't necessarily need to forget. And we don't necessarily need to turn the other cheek. Like, how many times are we going to let ourselves get hit in the face? It's that energy. Chiron and Aries. And this is also happening with Neptune and Pisces. I just want to speak from there as well. Is that this energy talks about needing appropriate limits on compassion appropriate limits on empathy, appropriate limits on giving. And when I speak this message to the collective, I feel the unease. I feel the discontent with the message I convey because a lot of us believe that love is always the high road. And I believe that too. But at the same note, there are some people in this world that don't know how to use love in a constructive way because they lack the love from themselves the choice to love themselves. Maybe they weren't shown the tools, this, then the third, but not only do we need to put certain appropriate limits on compassion, we need to put certain limits on conscience too, guys. And this is what hurts people as well. This is where you need to get better judgment with this Libra season, thinking about how, again, if people knew better, they would do better. So sometimes, if you understand a reason that someone would hurt or inflict their pain upon another person, your understanding may give you enough comfort to turn your cheek and get slapped upside the head silly and get knocked the fuck out TKO like Mike Tyson. Like, that's not cool, man. Just because you understand something doesn't mean someone's going to benefit from you not setting boundaries or enabling toxic behavior. So we need certain limits on conscience and we need certain limits on empathy on that same note. If you understand what I just said, you know why we need limits on empathy, okay? So the healing within relationships to ourself and other people is going to look like forgiveness for choices that we've made or mistakes that we've made that weren't necessarily in our best or highest good. This is going to look like value adjustments as well. The need to understand what growth really looks like for us. To know that your needs don't necessarily equate, equate to the needs and wants of another person. And if we make assumptions on this note, we can lead ourselves to hard disappointments. And this is not going to be fun. The question is, how many times are you going to break your heart through other people before you decide to love yourself and fulfill the needs that you actually are required to fulfill for your damn self? A relationship should be 100-100. We don't want 50-50. That's two half people on one boat, and that's surely going to be unsustainable because there is a lack, an inherent deficit, so we can never find overflow. Really, when two people 
love and trust themselves enough. Nah, fuck it. Let me restart. When two people love and trust themselves and they come together and they give to each other from a place of true abundance and trust. Symbiotic growth can exist perpetually. And that's as real as it gets. Value adjustments. This looks like important conversations and partnerships with friends, lovers, business, associates, employees. Conflict delay is conflict multiplied. And if you assume you make an ask out of you and me, don't make an assumption. Ask for what you want and set your expectations clear so people can meet you halfway. Make sure your boundaries are firm. And this is the other point I was going to get at, guys. Like, realistically, there's mathematical probability, and this shit happens every single day, but Venus opposite Chiron on this full moon is going to look like a lot of breakups, a lot of people choosing to leave a partnership that has been served its purpose or maybe never served it to fucking begin with. Walking the fuck away because we're realizing the need for freedom and independence. Not wanting to hold ourselves back, compromise our will and our choice and our vision and our passion for the sake of feeling related to, feeling comfortable, feeling like we're seen. Because at the end of the day, y'all, you can get in a, like, there's many layers of existence. You can get in a relationship, a partnership, and end up feeling more lonely with the person than you did by your damn self because of a discrepancy between connection on some level. Like, some of y'all need to get in your sapiosexual bag and start forming your intimate connection with people mentally before anything else. Because thoughts contain feelings. So when you connect on a similar set of ideals, AKA Libra, you will have similar emotions and likely similar values. But at the same time, this talks about like air and then water. We're not leaving things up to assumption and chance. We're talking about our values. We're making sure our direction is the same. We're connecting mentally and then emotionally, and then we can build our fucking chemistry. Do you understand? Because the root chakra is a thing. Mars is, <laughs> Mars just be down bad sometimes, man. We need to be up good. So be appropriate with your energy. <laughs> this talks about buy batteries for your thing and just leave it alone, bruh. Like don't compromise and give your love and care to those that don't deserve or support it. New boundaries, new standards. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's, man. Like, fuck Little Caesars, even though it has a special place in my heart. You feel what I'm saying? Better. <laughs> so, another thing about this moon opposite Chiron Venus is, like, this could look like... If you've been doing the inner work and you've been filling yourself with love and you've been putting good seeds in the universe, this is going to feel like feeling totally, completely satisfied, having all your needs met internally, wanting for nothing. That's one of the most beautiful transits of the year. Ooh, pardon me. Feeling totally at peace with yourself in the world and your place within the world. This is a beautiful thing. So I said feeling totally satisfied, but we have spectrums of possibilities. So I do want to kind of say, or kind of empty, not going to lie. Like you might feel a little bit of both. You again, might be meeting yourself on a different level that you may have deliberately hid from yourself. So evolution is knocking at the door and you can either hide in the closet in the eighth house negative ass desires or you can really charge head first in the first house by what you know to be right by your own understanding you know so what we need to consider with um this same opposition full moon venus overindulgence doing too much needing to fill this feeling of unfulfillment to satiate ourselves in some way. Like we talk about the Venus part brings up needing to be partnered, needing that love. Don't let the love of others substitute the love for self. Another reaction that I felt from this angle, guys, which you need to be very careful of, is that with, with Chiron on the moon, basically triggering motherfuckers, <laughs> helping us hit different parts of ourself that are kind of uncomfortable, that we would rather hide from ourselves. that energy, like the cups we don't want to touch, You might start seeing where your needs really are, or you might start being confronted with your desire, but the inner resistances of self-doubt may lead some this time to unknowingly or 
unconsciously suppressing our desires, suppressing our needs, suppressing our wants, denying ourselves what we actually need, and that's not healthy. Like, I don't think I need to tell you guys that's not healthy, but it's not healthy. You have to accept yourself in all ways, shapes, and forms, man. You aren't gonna like this. Maybe you will, I don't know. Someone's not gonna like this, but you're not gonna go anywhere without feeling the full range of human expression and experience. Don't shoot the messenger. So, this feels like doing something strange for change. Venus opposite the full moon of Chiron. I'm gonna just leave it at that, man, because I really love how many images I get from that. You can just use your imagination on that one. So guys, this is actually like, it gets so intense. I'm not trying to be too dramatic or emphasize things for no reason, but this is where she gets even more serious, guys. Like, bro, that's your confirmation. I'm not joking. Like, the full moon in Aries Libra, this is square Black Moon Lilith in Cancer. So Black Moon Lilith in Cancer is talking about deep emotional healing. But the feeling of discontent is something to keep in mind also. So the thing about this, guys, like I said, it's square the full moon. So Lilith is square the sun and square the moon. Lilith is adding pressure. Like, the way... So this is like... If you guys want me to title Lilith and Cancer for you or just give you an idea, there's a pit in my stomach. And there's probably a pit in yours too, man. In the collective, in the womb of the goddess. This is how I feel and see this. Like, Lilith and Cancer talks about deep emotional healing. And healing our femininity and healing our connection to source, the connection to love and intimacy. But Lilith, there's a lot of ways to calculate Lilith, like true, mean, asteroid, node, um, well, not node, but in the form of Lilith being like the apogee of the moon, the furthest place the moon can be from the, the earth, this really speaks to the lack of fulfillment in our need for intimacy feeling discontent and as I was bringing this up in the TikTok live last night I was sensing and I had this confirmed by a lot of people that a lot of us have been experiencing actual violations injustices transgressions when it comes to love or connection or people in our lives like being violated going through injustice seeing things that are terrible, feeling oppressed, feeling like the universe itself is betraying us, feeling unsafe, bro, like literally, I shuffle and there these come out right again, man. Like this is evolution happening on a very deep and high level, and it manifests physically as a very ugly thing, guys. But again, like there's a spectrum of possibilities, so I'm kind of throwing the worst at you first, so... This may look like Lilith bending the full moon, the violations and injustices we experience being an initiation into deeper forms of self-care. Sometimes when the world puts you with your back against the wall or makes you stand by yourself, this is a test or an initiation in its own right. And this feels like constellation prize to a person who never fucking chose to be violated. What you need to understand as well, dude, is like, Those that often find themselves in an experience of being violated or being transgressed or experiencing injustice, a lot of this comes from, I don't want to say it comes from, but these people are very loving and narcissists and terrible people and dangerous people would prey on those that are kind and loving and caring and compassionate and trusting. So sometimes... when we're really going through our healing journey or trying to understand why such injustice was afflicted upon us, this is where we have to put limits on compassion, empathy, and conscience for other people, not yourself. Send the love and understanding to yourself, but tr try not to blame yourself for being violated or being mistreated by other people. Try not to blame yourself for the injustices of other people because you maybe understand the nature of their pain. That doesn't make shit fair at all. So 
while some people love to be in the position of victim because it gives them oblique forms of support and care, it is worth the reminder that most victims do not choose to be victims. And narcissists really ruin the energy of victimization for most of us in some way. So we're learning to balance a lot of hard energies, y'all. This energy with Lilith and Cancer, square the full moon, could talk about feeling very powerful and very well connected in your life if you haven't been getting dirt thrown on you and if you've been doing inner work and really going against your own insecurities and injustices and transgressions you oppose upon yourself. This could be the most empowering transit of your life. Either way it goes, it probably will be. But on the other note, you know, Lilith and Cancer square the moon, the moon and sun could talk about feeling weak or powerless or alone, feeling isolated, feeling so pain, so painful, so hurt. And if you feel like you're at the end of your rope, just trust. Trust and be still and hold yourself still with some love. Just breathe. This too shall pass. This is the shitty thing about injustice and violation, man. It's like it's, it's terrible and it's meant to dehumanize and deconstruct and distort a person. So when you experience what you would consider a violation, we again have to listen to Chiron and say, let's not take it personally. Even though a lot of times it's very fucking personal, we're going to take our soul and look at this from a higher perspective. And we're going to think about how 10 years from now we're going to celebrate this circumstance. We're going to have more perspective. We're going to pull ourselves out of this deep discontent and we're going to make our future bigger than our past. We're going to realize that everything that we experience is for our best and highest good. Whether you believe this or not, it's very important to tell you that nothing bad can ever happen to you because everything that happens to you is for your best and highest good in some way, shape, or form. You might not always understand, and the confusion can make you feel like your suffering is amplified. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't have a test if all the answers were provided for you. So when you have dirt covering your eyes and the pressure crushing your back and you cannot see the light of day aka dark night of the fucking soul and all you want to do is give up because life is not fucking fair breathe send love send trust reach out to spirit reach out to spirit call for help i went through this a lot this year y'all and spirit has took this full circle for me and made me realize why i was violated this year and if I'm speaking to your soul and your stomach, you need to open the Bible and read Psalm 12. And I don't give a damn if you're religious. I'm certainly not. But read this Psalm and call upon the universe for help against injustice. Because the Lord forsakes not their saints. The days of the upright and blameless are known by the creator. You can't, you can't hide the truth and you can't hide from the higher self. You can lie to people, men lie, women lie. But numbers in reality don't fucking lie. So the higher self man is looking at violations and transgressions like, what the fuck is this, man? It's like a mom kind of like laughing and chuckling, but she's about to beat some ass in a second. So you have to trust and you have to rise above anger. This is really like the point of the psalm if you don't listen to it or read it. Rise above anger. Cease from wrath. Let go of the pain as hard as it is and how some people in their deliberate violations of you may try to hold your energy oppress you and the word is licentious some people will violate other people because they feel jealous or possessive or feel so insecure that they feel the need to own another person in their own insecurity makes them do terrible things to maintain control of other people so whenever this shit happens man or if you experience some similar energy you need to disconnect you need to set boundaries and you need to remove yourself from the narcissist or whatever the circumstance is that's creating toxic pain in your life it's meant to make you feel isolated so surround yourself with good help
but let go of anger. It's the hardest thing to do whenever you're experiencing actual injustice. But when you let go of anger, you will have more space for love. And the thing about pain is pain will turn to anger. And then anger will turn into aggression. And then aggression will turn into destruction. So when you cease from anger and let go of wrath, you prevent yourself from doing evil. And that's why you have to forgive and let go of pain and choose to love. And like I said, while you can forgive, you don't necessarily have to forget. And you don't have to accept apologies. And you don't have to actually allow it again. You can stand up for yourself. And I want to give a big, first of all, congratulations. And uh, I'm proud of you for everybody who's really feeling this message that we've been on for a second, like this Lilith energy. If you're experiencing this pain in some way, shape, or form, dude, I'm really proud of you for standing true to yourself, standing up for what you know is right, even when it's hard and even when you have to do it fucking alone. I'm proud of you for doing that. Your soul is proud of you. It takes a lot of strength and courage to choose a more compassionate and true form of love and to truly reject hatred and toxicity and jealousy and licentious programs that don't represent trust because love is about trust. Go where you're celebrated and remove yourself from the environment that hurt you because you can't heal in the same environment that got you sick. Okay? So, this is deep emotional transformation. This is empowering us through a shedding of the the old womb. I didn't necessarily mean to say that, but that came through so we can think about that. So let's talk about some of these Mercury aspects because these are going to affect our mental life. This shedding, bro, it's like the world is on its period now that I think about it. And that's funny weird. Funny haha if that made you laugh, but hey. Shit is not fun, man. So we're going to need some Midol. We're going to need to do some gentle stretching. We're going to need some Reiki. I would really recommend, guys, if you can get yourself some Rainbow Moonstone or some Black Moonstone. But really, I would recommend the Rainbow Moonstone more so specifically for working with this Black Moon Lilith and Cancer Transit. It's been one of my saving graces. It helps you repair the aura. It helps you basically heal any chakra, but also get connected to the rhythm of the universe. So Rainbow Moonstone on the sacral chakra is what everybody needs right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Ah, that's what it is. Ah, that's what it is. I'm just pulling cards off the top, bro. Like I don't even got a, a picture of less 3000 words for you guys right now. Like I need to stop, but you know, just let y'all take these in and then we're gonna stop after that one. So Mercury retro post shadow. We still have Mercury in the sign of Virgo. It's it's creeping back up to eight degree Libra wherever it went retro for the first time or um, when it started the retrograde. So we're getting things back on track, guys. And it's like okay to experience certain interruptions or frustrations in your day to day life or environment. Mars is still in Gemini. This adds a lot of tension or um, energy to our nerves and mental life. So you need to understand that things are getting back on track after this Mercury retro shadow is still a thing. So. I would recommend that we slow ourselves down to make things easier for ourselves. Work on precision in your day to day, but slow down and do that. That's going to help you to make things easier for yourself. Organization and priorities are really important. On the Mercury Gemini or the Mercury Virgo Mars Gemini, you may experience some frustrations when it comes to communication with other people. Um, that's for sure. I just I just heard that. Frustrations with communication, man. Like people not listening, perhaps. Jupiter is still in Aries. People not really trying to hear you out, or maybe like you're not the one listening because you're super hyper aggressive and might have like a agenda with your interaction with people. <laughs> so just uh, be real with yourself, whoever I'm talking to. Um, but this same energy talks about like the mind being very clear and fast, but yet when you use your mind in the external world, seeing interruptions, like why is traffic so slow? Why are motherfuckers slowing down in front of my car? You know, why when I'm clicking on something on my computer, does the screen shift and make me click on something else? It's this type of energy. 
like holy fuck man it's frustrating sometimes so what you need to understand is that um when you experience periodic disturbances and frustrations and interruptions in your life as hard as it is to see it this way these interruptions are actually necessary obstacles for your growth and methods to get to know yourself unconsciously but if you're too fucking frustrated you're gonna miss the message you're teaching yourself every time so listen wait breathe pause think feel psychoanalyze food for thought you know you have a lot to tell yourself we still have mercury making an opposition to, Nep to jupiter and it's kind of sandwiched between um what am i trying to say let me restart the sentence mercury is opposing jupiter and neptune it's kind of in the middle of the opposition of both of them so this is going to look like expansive transcendental thoughts you know also a lot of stimulation like we just talked about flashes of insight clarity might be coming through with the mercury neptune this is really fun getting really precise about your ambition and your goals is also something to consider but when we think about how these oppositions work and how that there's different spectrums of possibilities this could talk about cloudier judgment because our mind is more fixated on the transcendental realm not seeing things so clearly getting lost in the sauce kind of daydreaming excessively maybe falling into the um fabric of our life unconsciously losing yourself to find yourself again you know don't get too frustrated with yourself if you experience this shit y'all because like <laughs> the way that this plays out with this virgo aries energy is like you may kind of ex you kind of might feel like um your wor your worst enemy when you feel like you're interrupting yourself but also it's like it's a journey not a destination you got to enjoy the process of getting there as much as being there so we would all do well to remember that daydreaming lethargy you may not feel like the need to get up and go do things even though the mind might be telling you to do things so meet yourself halfway try to be realistic to yourself don't set the bar way higher than your booty to reach unless you're playing like limbo or some shit so mercury is also making a sesquiquadrate to the north node this is a 135 degree angle it does talk about some tension this looks like the need for careful planning for me this talks about like while you may feel hyper ambitious or getting precise about what your dreams are the mercury neptune thing you're gonna need to really break these things down logically and you're gonna need to plan for contingencies you need to expect the unexpected this is impossible but <laughs> you're gonna have to try your best to really plan for the curveballs and the inevitable obstacles that will be presented because a lot of you guys have great planning but you just really fail to take into account the external uncontrolled variables and if you understand that, you're gonna get in the, you're gonna get out of your way a lot of the times. That your planning is actually really good, and you might not think so because you just don't consider all the external factors that are out of your control. Like when you consider the fact that sometimes you know it might take you some time to get all your stuff together and get in the car, add 30 minutes to your schedule, or you know this person that you are relying on might have something else that they're doing, or they might not be consistent. You know, you can start to um refuse interruption in your life like get out of your own way don't let anybody else interrupt you but also learn how to be mutable learn how to be flexible in your plans don't make your plans so fucking fle uh, so rigid that you can't advance yourself so this does feel like being determined to grow having to move forward mercury says quadrant the north node but at the same time north node in taurus needs us to grow into a place that's more stable and balanced and, and peaceful and then Virgo is like, I have to fix, I have to fix, I have to fix. This feels like feeling stuck. So what you need to understand is if you feel stuck or you think you're stuck, you maybe need to look at your plan before you really accept being stuck. And really consider if you're being appropriate with your energy or if maybe you're looking too far and your scope is... Like some of you guys need to take the telescope out of your face and use your damn eyes. Like that's a real message for somebody. Because you might not be stuck. You might just be trying to um, use a formula that actually doesn't make sense mathematically. Like you run into error code. Like you keep running it on the computer and it says error, error, error. And then it's like rather than fucking looking at the code and looking at where the brackets weren't matched up or something, you're just like enter, enter, and enter again. You're like, it must be the computer. No, it's an operator error. So don't take it personally. It just is what it is. So <laughs> Mercury, try and Pluto. This is um, powerful thoughts the gift of foresight pluto just went direct 
so we're ready to get on to moving and transforming our life in a, in a conscious way. Pluto is deep and affects the unconscious. So almost don't even want to talk about this, man, because to, um, to bring it Virgo enough for everybody, it's going to take me way too long. So I just want to say that this empowers the mind. It gives us foresight. We want to be intentional with our ideas. Don't overthink things too much. Analysis paralysis is one of the struggles of Mercury Pluto angles is wanting such a pen like it's penetrating insight, but having such a deep all encompassing view of your ambition or endeavor can warrant one to not take action because they value having full control. And if they see a place where there's no control, insecurity or self doubt or fear can really impede on one's ability to take action. So this is again where I'm reminding you the fears inside of you are places where they are where you are awaiting your own love. Fear, doubt, that's an inner resistance that's just calling you to love yourself. Mercury Triangle Pluto talks about creative destruction. Making space for what we desire by removing the interference. When we talk about Mars and Gemini Square, Neptune and Pisces, you're going to be really careful about taking on too much. Overextending yourself, making your goals so idealistic that they actually can't exist tangibly and that's rough man don't do that it makes sense to do it principle is beautiful again what's your truth how are you going to live it but also make it make sense man if you're extending yourself outside of the realm of your control you are not being appropriate with your energy so this talks about having to surrender certain ambitions mars square neptune mars is the intention learning from Neptune, our dreams. That's another way you could put this. This is goal adjustments. This looks like choosing peace, rising above conflict, rising above adversity. But at the same time, guys, I can't lie to you and just talk about, you know, the fact that we live in the world with people. Some people are going to choose delusional ass aggression and it's going to be in your best interest to avoid these people, take the high road and not take it personally when other people really do things that um, are destructive in not a creative, loving way, like harmfully, negatively destructive. This is about choosing peace, understanding your non-negotiables, affirming your boundaries, stepping into your control, choosing the truth and not letting anybody manipulate the truth. Libra deals with justice. So this season is about justice. And while Lilith is square on our notes, I know we talk about seeing the lack of it sometimes in some spaces, and that's unfortunate. But at the same time, growing pains, as above, so below, on a high level, the Chiron, like, this is about not feeling betrayed and violated by the world that you created. Even though this world may literally betray and violate you sometimes. To understand this with compassion on a soul level, on an evolutionary level, so you don't feel like you personally identify with the suffering of this world. Fire of fire, embody the will of your soul. Even though this shit seems kind of cruel sometimes, that brings up the need for shadow work. Guys, I'm too good at tarot, quite honestly. Like, I'm not here to toot my own horn, but it's like, if you guys see what I'm talking about, you'll see, bro. <laughs> like, pictures are worth thousands of words, and I don't really need these cards. They're just, they're just supplemental reading material. But, you know, guys, you can't hide from the higher self. You can't hide the truth. The truth will come to light. And... It is what it is, man. At the end of the day, we have to pay for the repercussions of our actions. The words we speak carry weight and they create. So if you don't want to create it, don't say it. Be intentional with all in the realm of your control. Love and trust yourself so you don't feel the need to control other people or manipulate other people or abuse other people. I don't feel like you need that last message if you're watching this, but at the same time, you do need it actually as soon as I said it. A lot of us don't choose to abuse on a conscious level. Like I said, sometimes the unconscious methods of seeking security get in the way of our conscious methods of seeking security. And this is why sometimes people do really terrible things out of fear of losing other people, losing control of themselves or, you know, it's a damn shame, man. It really is. We don't know what we don't know. If you're going through the pain, the shadow work, and the healing, you just got to remember that this too shall pass. I promise you it will. 
the only people that get removed from the game are the ones that aren't learning about how the rules work. If you stay in the game and you commit yourself to just learning and loving, you'll stay in the game. And you'll continue to delight yourself in the abundance of peace. I promise you. And the transgressors and the violators, they will be cut down like the withering fucking green herb, man. You will look for them and they won't be there. Mark my words, read about it. Psalm 112, guys. And you can read my book too, simplifiedastrology.com. This world is balancing a lot of energies and we have Saturn ending its retrograde on the 23rd. Guys, justice is coming. So just enjoy love and peace. That's what this is about, man. The world could use a lot more of it. This world needs more healing. And quite honestly, this is the way we are all going to continue to evolve is by learning to love ourselves and learn to love people. Love another. Exist in concurrent harmony. Sympathetic growth. Drop a like, please. Leave me a comment. Let me know how this went. If you're watching it in retrospect, let me know. Some of you guys might be preparing for the full moon come tomorrow on Sunday. So take care of yourself. Love yourself. Trust your vision. Do all those things. And share this video if it helped you. Consider sharing it. I got all the links in the bio. Um, you guys know the deal at this point. I'm not going to hold you any longer. This has been a longer breakdown, but with this full moon opposing my moon, I'm not holding back on this one, y'all. Like, I just really wanted to get it all out there. So, this is about working on love. This is about working on not letting our aggression stomp our need for love and connection. Not letting our passion, our desire, our intensity get in the way of connecting to the world in a way that's loving and honest and fair. As the blade is to the chalice, as the sword is to the grail, as truth is to love, the goddess God and the great spirit unite in this space to create healing on all planes for the best and highest good and harm to none. So mote it be. I love you guys so much.